right, all right, all right. Hey, this is Blue Hawk Talk. I'm your host, Ava Breiterman, and I'm here today with... Elena Wharton. Welcome her back, everybody. Our former host and the current co-host of E Squared. That's right, yeah. And it's on every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Right 11? <laughs> it's a much better time than this. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. This, this is really late. But we're here. We're here. We're, <laughs> we're here and we're loving it. Now, and what better time for a nightlife industry talk yeah then 10 p.m oh yeah on a wednesday we're getting real here <laughs> 10 p.m on a wednesday <laughs> so today elena is not only our very special guest because she's our former host but she's also a very special guest because she's on this year's 21st compilation yes. album for blue hawk records Good. so you want to dive into that oh my gosh absolutely yeah all right so why don't we talk about uh your process a little bit like where this new song came from oh goodness okay so <laughs> it's very similar to my first song fairy tales which is featured on blue hawk records 20 which is the the most recent compilation um this song came about right after i came home from a trip to disney world <laughs> uh, as some of you may know I, i'm a bit inspired by my disney vacations or at least the, the past two of them because the, <laughs> those are when the, the songs were kind of born um but yeah this this new one kind of came about after that and it was just one of those times where i had thought of a situation and i just started like writing down all of these lyrics uh kind of you know inspired by some sort of emotion that i had felt or had experienced or had you know, just kind of seen in the world or just thought about in general, um, you know, just kind of like a, a spitting out ideas, things that maybe rhyme, maybe don't. Um, and then once I took that idea, I kind of really felt inspired to, you know, kind of put music to it and kind of formulate it into a song. And, you know, as it kind of unfolded, I'm like, OK, this this is probably the next one. This one feels really good. That's amazing. I mean, you got a very magical song out of the most magical place on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's talk about this new album a little bit oh yeah we can't we can't disclose the title Ooh, i don't even know it yet i'm excited uh, we haven't told you yet we're gonna we're gonna tell you at the next photo shoot amazing which um but what we can say is this is the 21st compilation album from blue hawk records yeah it is the first compilation album that has all females on the record it's all girls that is so incredible. It's, and there's so much girl power on this record. Good. Yeah. And you were you obviously were at the photo shoot at yes. the original photo shoot <laughs> as as you are one of the artists I and was you present needed for the photo shoot. <laughs> and you you saw just how like the sheer amount of girl power and how amazing thing like the group was as a whole collaboration, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I it just everyone really I think everyone works really well together. I mean, I, I haven't heard all of the songs, but I just know that it's going to be so, it's going to be so epic. I just, I can feel everyone's energy. Everyone's excited about it. And yeah, it's going to be super good. And what else we can say is it's coming in December. Yeah. So make sure that you stay updated, that you follow all of our socials, Blue Hawk Records Official on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And make sure to also follow all, all of the socials for WMCX on Insta, Twitter, and Facebook. They are WMCX889, WMCX on Twitter, and WMCX889 FM on Facebook. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> that was all from memory, you guys. <laughs> I usually I, I look at notes um, when I would like <laughs> shout out the socials. No, you got it all in there. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I say it like three times. Uh, an ep not an episode i three times a show i say uh -huh. it so it's just like it has to stick <laughs> in here at some point I mean, but uh so this is gonna be a really cool album and you also had a song on our last compilation album uh fairy tales yeah which is also disney inspired yes also a little bit more disney inspired i'd say because i mean the song fairy tales and i do reference cinderella in it so it is more directly related to disney world and this second one obviously was inspired by just like the magic and the feeling that i felt after coming back feeling refreshed and renewed to just sit down and write some more music so why don't we take a listen to that now we'll listen to Fairy Tales by Elena Wharton Yay. and some other songs off of our 20th compilation album, and then we'll come right back.
And we are back here here again. I'm your host, Ava Breiterman, and we are here with Elena Wharton. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody's favorite Disney songwriter. Yes. And future <laughs> Disney princess herself. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Well, thank you. So that was, we just listened to Fairy Tales, which is Elena's first song on the 20th compilation mm-hmm. an album of Blue Hawk Records, and we listened to Mother's Mind by Madeline Knight, so who good. was also on the 20th compilation album, and even though she's not going to be on this album, she is still working closely with Blue Hawk Records on her other projects. So now I want to talk to you about Fairy Tales. Ooh. And what what went into that song? What everything everything from the recording process to the inspiration Ooh. to you know the album release everything. This is taking me back. Okay, so fairy tales, like I said, kind of came about right after coming back from Disney, like a week later. Um, I had felt really inspired by this kind of story that I came up with in my head, and it it, it changed a couple times. So the the first draft of the song definitely doesn't sound like the last, but you know I kind of had this layout of lyrics, I kind of wrote this, you know, the music behind it, and as I was writing it, you know, that's kind of the first song that I've ever felt really confident sharing with people, and, you know, I I was writing it mostly, I was, like, by myself, and getting excited, like, alone in my room, (laughs) just being like, oh my gosh, yay, this sounds like a real song, like, finally, and, you know, once I had the song together, it wasn't too long before the semester started. And I like, I went to my sister and I'm like, hey, um, if this sounds stupid, just tell me and I won't audition for the compilation with this song. And I mean, thankfully, she was like, no, 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 it's not stupid. It's 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 good. And I'm like, the, oh, thank you. Because I usually, I always ask for her approval. I, I trust her judgment very much. So since she kind of, you know, was like, oh yeah, you, you got it. I'm like, okay, now I have the confidence to go in there. So yeah, I had the song Fairy Tales did a couple different drafts of it before the actual audition. Um, You know, I I changed some stuff in some verses. Some stuff sounded pretty corny to me. Um, So I adjusted it, made sure it was, you know, the story I wanted to tell, something that I really liked, something that I really felt connected to. And then I walked into the audition. I was really nervous. I was in the class at the time, in the, the record label strategies class. And it was kind of weird just like walking in and being like, well, hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, and then I sat at the piano, and unfortunately, the, the piano wasn't um, very much in tune. So I, when I started to... It's like one of those old pianos in woods. It's probably not very well taken care of. But, I mean, I, I, I dealt with it. And I think, you know, considering that situation, I handled it pretty well. Um, but I knew as soon as I hit, like, the first chord, I'm like, oh, shoot, is does this sound right? But luckily, it all turned out really well. I sat there, and as I was playing the song, I was just feeling like this this sort of new experience of like, oh my gosh, this is my own music that I'm sharing with, with people. And I felt, I thought to myself, like, you know, no matter what happens, I'm still very, you know, confident in this song. I still like this song a lot. Um, you know, just, you know, going into the audition for the experience mostly. And then, you know, once I, you know, I kind of heard from other people, like when they were going to send out the emails that people had like gotten onto the record because, you know, I was in like the group me and stuff. So (laughs) I was also in the loop at the same time of like auditioning and, you know, wondering if I was going to be on it. And it was terrifying because I was in a class and I had like seen a text message from someone who was like, okay, I'm sending out the emails like right now. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I think I saw like a notification that I got the email. And I was, I promised myself that I wouldn't like touch my phone or check it until after class. And then afterwards, I like literally just went straight to my email and I saw that, you know, I was going to be on the compilation and I was freaking out. I was so excited. And my mom, she didn't know that I had auditioned because I wanted to keep it a secret. And I, she happened to be, to be picking me up that day. And I got into the car and I was like, hey, mom. And she's like, how was class? I'm like, class was great. Um, let me tell you a story. And I was like, I auditioned for the compilation and now I'm on the compilation. And she's like, okay, what? So that was, that was really fun. Uh, but then kind of working with the song and the production of it, that was kind of crazy. There were some ups and downs in the road, some bumps, but in the end, I ended up with this really amazing team working on the song with me. Jordan Delone, or Jordan Tyler, um, as he's known as an artist, uh, Janae Louis-Jacques, and Max Wolf. Crazy, crazy group to work with. We all sat together, 
and we kind of crafted this song and you know leading up to that point I was so nervous because I'd never done anything like this before and I'm like I, I don't even know what to do with my song I don't know what the sound is gonna be I don't you know what are people gonna think of it it's just it feels so different and you know by the time we were done producing the song I loved loved the final product so that was the demo and then after doing the demo I had gone into the studio like like two days after the demo was finished or like the day after. I don't, it was a very short span of time. Uh, we went into the studio and it was it was a little stressful because it happened to be a, a different situation than what would normally happen in the studio because I think someone had already booked the space that you would usually record in. So I actually had to record my vocals in the control room, like with, with Connor Hansen, uh, you know, who did all the, the technical stuff, the engineering and such. He was sitting like literally right next to me as I'm recording the vocals, which is not really, you know, that doesn't usually happen, I don't think. Yeah, it's not really <laughs> traditional. And, you know, I I wasn't mad about it because I was still getting that recording experience. But I'm like, what's it, you know, what's it like in the studio? Like, what what's it really like in there? Which I, I did get to find out this time around. But for fairy tales, that <laughs> that was just like a, a silly little thing that ended up happening. But it turned out really cool. There were some really cool pictures that were taken there, too. Um, so even though I wasn't in, like, the actual recording booth, it still looked like the... Um, like the recording studio environment, the vibe was still there, and we did the song in a few takes, and that it just turned out really, really well. That's amazing, thing, <laughs> though. Like you, you just straight up went for the audition, got in. I know it's really nerve wracking because I had to send out yeah. the emails this semester about who got in and who didn't, and some people came back to me and they were just like. They emailed me back, and you know when <laughs> someone texts you or emails you, and you can't technically know for sure that what they're feeling, but it almost feels like they're upset with you, and you're oh, just like, yes. oh. <laughs> and it was so hard, and I texted my best friend right after, and I was like, I have to tell you that I just did this thing, and I feel really bad about it. He's like, why? You're doing what you're supposed to do, and I'm like, I can't. This is... <laughs> it's it's wow. a very hard decision, because there's yeah. so many talented people, but we can only have, I think the number is like s up to seven people on the mm -hmm. record. Or that they told us, like, which is crazy. And that must have been so hard, just, like, sending out the nose. It's like, oh, you know, like, we, we, oh, you just, we can't, sorry. Oh, and you hit send, and it's like, oh, run away from the computer, run, run away. away. Close it, don't look. Don't. <laughs> don't look. God, I feel so bad thinking about it, too. But it's just, like... But that doesn't mean that the song, you oh, know, wasn't there good are either. So many. That's the thing about Monmouth, though, is even mm -hmm. though not everyone is like a singer or not everyone is a guitarist, there's a collective amount of talent everywhere here, mm -hmm. right? We all we have talented musicians, we have talented industry personnel, we have talented everybody, and everybody has that one talent, and it's very hard to include everybody on everything, thing every time because like there's just so much like abundance and you have to like cut it off somewhere but it, yeah. it's really awesome because even if it doesn't make it onto the record you can still collaborate with them oh yeah there's so much going on here at, at monmouth there's so many other clubs we have the mu players we have <laughs> the music alliance which is yeah and a songwriting club and if you ever want to like there's also blue hawk records the club mm -hmm. outside of the record label strategies class so if you ever want to collaborate with anyone or you need help in any way to, you know, become your own, you know, superstar, we're all here to, like, back you up. And we're right here to, you know, help you, you know, make sure that you're stage ready and help you make sure that your song is, like, the best it can be. Mm -hmm. People are always willing to, like, collaborate with any aspect of anything people are just so willing to work together here and that's so it's so great so even if you don't get on like the compilation you can still work with blue hawk records and kind of form an event with us or help set up or perform at an event we have like a, a ton of stuff like going on there's always like open mics happening different things where you can just like you know have fun with us and you know perform talk about music it's always a good time it always is and we're gonna get back to some more good times with some more songs here <laughs> off of the 10th compilation album Hang 10. We're going to start with You Feel Like Home by Nicolette Pezza. If you need any more information about the upcoming album, remember to go to our socials, Blue Hawk Records Official, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok, and check out more information from WMCX. They're WMCX889 on Insta, WMCX on Twitter, and WMCX889FM on Facebook.
And that was You Feel Like Home by Nicolette Peza and Arno by The Nux. We are back now with the one and only Elena Wharton. Hello, hello. Co-host of E Squared. Mm -hmm. And previous host of Blue Hawk Talk. Yeah, that's right. And she is on the 20th compilation album, which can be found, uh, Blue Hawk Records 20th compilation album can be found on all streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be on, I mean, she is on, but she will be on when it comes out. (laughs) The 21st compilation album for Blue Hawk Records that is coming out in December, which will also be found on all streaming platforms. So remember to look out on our socials for that. Let's talk about you. Yay! Okay. Let's talk. Ta- you're a music major. Yeah, that's right. Music industry, right? Music industry, correct. And you're junior. Yeah. And you have your own radio show. I do. You want to talk about that? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So this semester, uh, me and my good friend Emily Maxim, we are hosting a radio show called E Squared. It's every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So it's kind of transition into the morning or from the morning into the afternoon. Uh, we sit and talk about some cool stuff. We love marching band. We love music. Uh, we love Big Time Rush, you especially. Have a, you have a weekly Big Time Rush song. <laughs> Yes, we do. Every single week, uh, we start off our show by playing a Big Time Rush song, and it's a new one every single week. So <laughs> that's really cool. And we make TikToks out of it and reels. Uh, you know, it's just something super fun we like to do. We've had a couple of guests so far, and that's really exciting. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, we are at E squared underscore WMCX. There's a bunch of fun stuff that you can see there. <laughs> that's super cool. And do you plan on going into radio when you graduate? Oh, gosh. Um, well, first of all, I didn't even think I'd be doing anything relating to the radio in college at all. Like, I, you know, I didn't want to avoid the radio, but it just didn't seem like something that interested me that much. And then when I was, you know, I just kind of, I, you know, decided to do it with the class. And I've, you know, really grown to, to love it a lot. And I have been considering that maybe radio could be a potential career path or maybe like an internship. Um, You know, it's just something that I've been thinking about. We have the the Sirius XM and Pandora trip tomorrow. We do. That is tomorrow. So uh, for those of you who are going, uh, as much as we appreciate you listening in, (laughs) go to bed. That's going to be an early day. You've got to be at the train (laughs) station. It's like 8.15. Yeah. Oh, my my gosh. When I got the email, I'm like, no way. I've never done a college field trip before, but this is scary and exciting, and it's going to be totally awesome. Yeah. And if you're not signed up, uh, it is too late to sign up, but Mm -hmm. you can always – there's dozens of these. They have them for almost every major, every industry, every year. Sign up. Find it on Handshake. A lot of times they'll put it – you can get emails from your professor with it. Uh, I know the history department does it quite a bit. Uh, yeah. And the poli sci department does it. The music department obviously does it. <laughs> We're going. Yeah, who knew? Right? And it's it's a great experience. It's I mean I've never done one, but I've been told that it's really good for networking. It's mm-hmm. really fun. You learn a lot. You meet a lot of people. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of be in that environment. It's, you know, it's like the real deal. It's Sirius XM and Pandora. So <laughs> <laughs> We're going into New York. And, yeah, it, it's just... I know I'm going to be, like, wide-eyed the whole time. Like, oh, my gosh, look at all these fun things. The big <laughs> apple. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know until I got the, like, email saying that you could sign up that SiriusXM and Pandora were the same company. Oh, yeah. I didn't know either. I'm like, oh, cool. Two for one. It makes so much sense. <laughs> but it's like, oh, what? It's like when you find out that Doritos is owned by Frito Lay. <laughs> it's like what? That's a separate. It's that's one not big the same chip, chip family. That's not. Or I think it's Gatorade is owned by Coca Cola. Wow. It's like what? That's not. <laughs> that can't be right. It's what? like no, those are two separate things. They can't be the same. Oh my God. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here we are. Oh, yeah. We're ready. So uh, if you're an incoming music student. Uh, or you are a music student, or you're a student of any, any um, what's the word? Major department. Yeah, you got it. Interest. <laughs> <laughs> Words. English. <laughs> uh, go go check those out. Go sign those. Go sign up for those. 
um, make sure that you go. They're really great for meeting people and for doing things, and it's, it's really fun. It's going to be really awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm sure you are. Oh, yeah. So excited. Miss Elena Wharton here has a lot of pep. She is the flautist in our pep band. Yeah, that's right. And she's so awesome. Oh, thanks. She's yeah, flute, piccolo, whatever needs to be played at the moment. <laughs> and you play Either keys. Either or. I do, yeah. Are you playing those in pep band or no? I haven't decided yet because I love piccolo so much, but I know you guys are looking for a keys player, so I'm still thinking about that. I know Jeff came to me. He's like, do you do you play keys? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you want to play keys? I'm like, I can play keys, but I can't play keys and guitar at the same time. And he's like, oh. In a perfect world, I'd love to do both. <laughs> <laughs> you switch from one to the other. You solo yeah, for right. two minutes there. You, you sprint over to the other side of the bleachers. And you go solo on the keys and you call it a day. You're like, okay, I've earned yeah. my paycheck. It's like a cardio workout. <laughs> running from instrument to instrument. <laughs> You're faster than the football players. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, because I, I haven't been in, in pep band this semester, so I haven't seen the football games. Or, Oh, my gosh, you didn't do pep either. No, I didn't. Oh, because I'm, of your arm. Yeah, I, uh, oh. I tore up my shoulder, and now I'm in PT. But you'll be back. I am. I'm coming back. We'll I both just be back got the, the okay from my physical therapist to play for up to 30 minutes a day. Great. So I before this, I was like, they were like, you can do five to ten minutes. And I was like, that's warm ups. And he's like, <laughs> well, eh, little by little. You <laughs> what? He's like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Don't mess up your arm. Like, oh. <laughs> don't. So it's just been warm ups over and over and over again. And now I get to play actual music. Even even songs that I don't like. There's. Like, Sweet Child of Mine is dreaded, <laughs> in my opinion, and most other guitarists' opinion, and I'm so excited to go back to Pep Band and play Sweet Child of Mine again. I never yeah. I never thought I'd be so excited to play We have great songs for we Pep do. Band. I'm excited. Do you have a favorite Pep Band song? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, one that's sticking out to me, I don't know if it's my favorite, but X's and O's is really fun. X's and O's is really fun. I'm really sad that we didn't get to play Hurricane Season last year, because mm-hmm. when I saw it and I learned the guitar part for it, I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And then Jeff was like, we can't do it. It's Aww. too hard. And I'm like, oh, what did I just learn this for? <sighs> Didn't we also have, did we have Hooked on a Feeling as we one of them? Did, and did we, we never like did never it. play That's it? Yeah. Right. We have some really interesting guitar songs that like, not really guitar songs, but songs that were like primarily written on guitar. And it's super fun because there's other ones that are cool, like X's and O's, but it wasn't made for guitar. <laughs> and Confident wasn't made for guitar, even though that was also oh, a cool Confident's song. Oh, Confident's so fun. That's Confident, another one I like. It's in, it's super popular. We play it. I remember last year I was like, I think we play this more than the fight song. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely play it more than our alma mater. <laughs> this oh, is, the alma mater. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a cute little tune. <laughs> what a cute little tune that definitely is ours. Yeah, I that's something that I don't understand. Like our alma mater, is it isn't it Ode to Joy? I don't know how that came to be. I you know what? Something I learned is there's like four my high school's alma mater was also like someone else's as well and oh. I, I don't remember what school it was, but it was some it was a famous one and I was like <laughs> Where have I heard this before? And everyone was like, oh, my God, this belongs to that school. And we were like, the school was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Shh. Like, there's <laughs> like four possible alma maters and you grab onto one. Yeah. It's like, did we claim Ode to Joy or does some other university somewhere also have Ode to Joy as their alma mater? I don't know. That's crazy. <laughs> the thing, that'd be super funny, though, if we went to like another school and like we played our alma mater and then they played theirs and it's just... <laughs> like six minutes of ode to joy and you're like gosh it's and it's the beginning of ode to joy it's the first couple of bars and then their turn and it's the first couple of bars again (laughs) you're like where have i heard this before (laughs) Hmm, sounds familiar so that's that's another activity you can do on campus you have blue hawk records club you have mu players you have the music alliance the songwriting club Mm -hmm. and we have the pep band yeah, which is so fun. It is. You get to go to all of the games. I mean, you go to the games for free anyway, but you get to play mm-hmm. instruments, especially if you're a former band kid, like you're a band kid. Mm-hmm. And oh, I'm yeah. a band kid. Uh, so we, you know, we get to continue it. And you make a lot of good friends. I've made mm-hmm. some of my best friends there, and you've made some of your best friends. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of good memories. There's some free travel. We went to Atlantic City last year yes. for the MAC tournament. And we're going to D.C. this year. Crazy. Which is super fun. And it's going to be super exciting. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Yeah. So 
There's that. Don't forget to follow for more updates on all of our socials at Blue Hawk Records Official. <laughs> I feel like a broken record every time <laughs> I do this. Blue Hawk Records Official on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Don't forget to follow WMCX on Insta at WMCX889, on Twitter at WMCX, Facebook at WMCX889FM. And if you ever want to listen to us ever again, you can listen right here at 889. 88.9 FM WMCX.com or you can get the Radio FX app which allows you to listen to all university radio stations and you just search Monmouth University and add to your favorites. All right, we're nice. gonna we're gonna go back. We're gonna listen to a couple more songs. We're gonna listen to Broken in Color and then we're gonna finish up with Hold On Tight by the Professors. Which includes none other than George Wurzbach. Oh my gosh. And our very own Joe Rapola. Uh, amazing. CEO of Blue Hawk Records and the professor for record label strategies. 